Hi guys, I'm Doritos Doritos, and today we're going to be checking out the 4321 current meta, the standard, the holy grail custom tactics. These are tactics that were created by pro player Footwiz Ethan. He won a pro tournament last month, and ever since then, pretty much every pro player has just copy and pasted these tactics as their own. They really are kind of what has set the tone for the meta in this game. Getting into these, we're going to start off with the defensive style, and that is unbalanced. The width, 47, depth, 72. This is quite a standard now, having your depth on 72. It's just very good for pressing the opponent, but also having automatic offside traps, just playing a high-pressing game. Build-up play, we're going to leave that unbalanced. Chance creation, as always, that is direct passing. That is just a go-to now. If you're using anything else, you're probably putting yourself at a disadvantage. Width, this is also on 47, so matching the defensive width. Players in the box, this is on 6. This is a bit higher than I personally like. This is a very offensive formation. You've got to be confident in your ability to track runs on the counter-attack with this because you are going to be leaving spaces in behind. As for the corners and free kicks, we'll just leave them on two. That gives us enough bodies up, but enough people back. Okay, the player instructions. These are very varied. There isn't really anything symmetrical about these. It is different on every player. So we'll start with the striker. He's just going to be on stay central. Mara is on the left side. He's going to be on comeback on defence. Cantona on the right. That is stay central getting behind. So that is our most offensive runner up top. As for these three centre midfielders, we've got stay back while attacking cover centre on Joao Cancelo. And we also have stay back while attacking cover centre on Mateus. As for our right centre mid, we're going to be having him on get into the box for cross. So he's your most offensive centre mid. Everything else there unbalanced. Essentially, most of these tactics are to ensure it defends in a 4-4-2. So when you aren't on the ball, Mahrez will be my left mid. Kaka will be the right mid. Mateus and Cancelo in the middle. Di Catalera and Cantona are up top. On the offence, it will play in the shape. But the idea is on the defence, you want to be on a 4-4-2. For your wing-backs, left-back is your more offensive full-back, so you want him to be on balanced overlap. On the right-hand side, you want to go with stay-back and overlap on that one. So they will only overlap when it's absolutely open and necessary for them to do so. But for the most part, they're going to be your more defensive wing-back. Centre-backs, leave these unbalanced. Goalie, leave this unbalanced. But if you want to be... Sweeper keeper comes for crosses on them. That's up to you. But this tactic, I've completely gone by how foot was Ethan sets it up. And he has these unbalanced. For the types of players that work in this team, your front three, we're going to really focus on meta here because it is the meta tactic. So the front three, as much pace, skill moves, weak foot as possible. Good turning ability. If there's the possibility of making any of them lengthy, then do so. For your left centre mid, they need to be a box-to-box ball-playing midfielder. For your middle centre mid, that needs to be your destroyer, your big man, your CDM. For your right centre mid, they need to be just as much of an attacker as your front three. Pace is absolutely vital in this position. So the likes of an Alawairan or an Adama Traore is very much key for this position. For your wing-backs, you want good offensive AI on your left back. A bit more of just a fast, strong wing-back for your right-back. As for your two centre-backs, speed, lengthy running style, great defensive AI. So you're looking Van Dijk, Lucio, those kinds of players. Your goalkeeper, whoever works. Might have already played this guy. I recognise the team. I have no idea if I won or lost, though. <laughs> okay, I've got them on this one here. Okay. Let's see what this met is all about then. It is definitely noticeable that Cantona is the more offensive striker with that getting behind instruction. That's 1 0. That's a nice finish from De Catalair there. It's definitely noticeable. Like when I'm on that initial attack, I can really see how Cantona is pushing forward more, but it seems to create like an off angle for one two passes, which is really nice. Great positioning by Carvalho there. Leave him for dead with Kaka. Oh, 
His goal, he got a touch, but it has gone in. The movement on this formation is absolutely excellent. I do see why the pro players would like it, because there's just so many like baits and different moves that you can use in just to manoeuvre with the player you're on, or you've got... As long as you time it right, you can play to the to those people that are making those moves because there's so many different options on. It's very, very impressed with it so far. Absolutely. Ooh, a lot of icons. Some really good ones in there as well. Cruyff, Jarzinho, Eto, that team, the Imakalele. He's got Lucio as well. Very, very strong team. See how we can do against it in this 4-3-2-1. This guy has been excellent on his defence, I have to say. Um, he's been very hard to break down. I've not had much success yet. Let's see what we can do here, utilising the overlap. That's very nice. And that is 1-0. So maybe that is... Oh, wow, he's actually quit. I'm surprised. I think the overlap on this formation is definitely... It's not something you have to use every time, but it does seem that when you are playing someone that is very defensively competent, that is your way in. Timothy Van Dijk and Ramos, that's a very strong defence. Bappe Alawai on a Jacinio on top. See him be... Oh, why has everyone got a better team than me? I'm not worried because I'm using the meta, so it's fine. I'm a scrub. Nope. Right, I'm counter-attacking him here. I don't care. I'm sick of the amount of chances I've wasted. Come on, Cantona. Head down. You saying bolt the boy. Come on. Come on. Bang it. There we go. <laughs> oh, gosh. It took me a whole half to put one of them away. Just took us to uh, play with a bit more passion. <laughs> Sorry, bro. I didn't mean to watch the replay. Look at this. Nine shots. Nine shots. It took me nine shots to put one away. That's terrible, isn't it? I need to just pick my moments a bit better, I think. Testament to how well the team's playing in terms of creating chances and how the formation works. I think it's just me getting used to the type of chances I'm getting with this formation. But so far, so good. Good tackle. They get Gary B on the run. Distract him here with some useless passes. Send it over the top. <laughs> Play it into the centre. Round the goalie, and that's two. Very nice counter-attack. This formation is very strong on the counter. That goal was a very good player. He put up a way better fight in the second half, but we held on. And then when the counter-attacks come, they're just too clinical in this formation to miss. To summarise, I think it's fair to say this team absolutely plays great in this formation. Like, I can understand why the pros are using this formation and it is a go-to. I don't necessarily think it stands out above some of the other tactics I use, but it's definitely something that gives the opponent a lot of looks. You've always got so many different options on, and it's just a lot for the opponent to think about on the defence. However, in for the way I play and the way I experienced it, I did find my nan was bailing me out a lot. So on the defensive side of things, I did feel a little bit more open than I would want to be. So I personally would maybe recommend dropping the players in the box down to five or four. And I think you will find that that tightens up the defence just a little bit because you're not committing as many people forward. In those really tough games, I did find I had to consciously use that overlap on the left-hand side. When I did that, I was then finding myself having success even in those tight games. So that's something also to think about. The only other thing I would say is just because I did feel it is quite open on the defence, just make sure you have got good defenders. Like Carvalho, especially for me, I noticed just his how well he tracks in this game and how just clean his tackling is was a real game changer for me on the defence. It was really noticeable more than normal because there wasn't loads of bodies back so it was like I was really having to rely on that AI and that tackling and he was excellent to be honest. If there's any other pro player tactics you want me to check out and sort of analyse and break down I'd be more than happy to do so just maybe send me a link to the uh, the, the pros ta tactics and I'll have a look and check it out. More than anything, just thank you for checking out the video today. I hope they help and I hope it's given you a bit more of an insight into these Footwiz Ethan Pro tactics, which a lot of people have been talking about. If you did enjoy the video, 
please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Take care, guys.